Hey, how's it going? Let's pick it up in Acts chapter 21 and read verses 17 through 26. When we arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers and sisters received us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James and all the elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or living according to our customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come. So do what we tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take these men, join in their purification rites, and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. The next day, Paul took the men and purified himself among, along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. So we're in verse 17 now. Paul has been on a pretty long journey to get to Jerusalem, and there's been a numerous prophecies saying that he would be in bondage and bound if he goes to Jerusalem. And so now in verse 17, we see finally he does arrive in Jerusalem and the brothers and sisters received, uh, received them warmly. So this is now a time when uh, he gets to Jerusalem and the people there uh, welcome him with open arms. And in verse 18, we see the next day, the rest of us went to see James and all the elders were present. So you might be thinking, well, wait now, wait a second. I remember in, a, you know, a long time ago in Acts chapter uh, 12, we read in verse 2 that uh, he had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. And so now isn't, isn't James dead? Well, James, the brother of John, is dead, but this is uh, another disciple now, James, the son of Alphaeus. Um, so he might be the only apostle that is at Jerusalem at this time period. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I would kind of think that more apostles would be listed if they were also there to, uh, to greet Paul at this time. So I'm not exactly sure he could be the only one in Jerusalem. Maybe the rest of them are out doing ministry in other places, but uh, it says all the elders were present. And so uh, now they're meeting. Verse 19, Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And so he's speaking about what God has done. And you also notice that he doesn't just talk about like, you know, all the great things he's doing, but he's saying what God has done through his ministry. And so in verse 20, it says, when they heard this, they praised God. And sometimes when we have things happen in our lives or we hear about a great testimony in somebody else's life, we can forget to thank God, to praise God for those things. And this is a good reminder to do those things when we hear about what God has done, when we experience what God has done, to thank God and praise God as well. It's really, really good. It says then in verse 20, then they said to Paul, you see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed and all of them are zealous for the law. So they they hear kind of what Paul, uh, what the what God was doing through the ministry of Paul, and then they praise God, and then they respond to Paul, and they talk about how many thousands of Jews have believed. And so Paul has been doing lots of ministry with the Gentiles, and they're giving a little report of what's happened uh, with the Jews. And now just imagine Paul hearing this. This must be so meaningful to Paul, and this must give him such great joy. We really see that in Romans chapter 9, Paul's heart. It says in verses 1 through 3, I speak the truth in Christ, 
I am not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. And so this is something where he has an incredible, incredible heart to see these Jews saved and come to Christ. And so now he gets to see that. He hears of the report and he's doing all this ministry in the gen- with the Gentiles. And he gets to hear about many thousands of Jews have believed and all of them are zealous for the law. So he gets to hear this and that's kind of a neat thing for him to hear. I mean, that would be such a, a neat moment for him to hear uh, that report. What a great thing for Paul. And then We read in verses 21 through 24 uh, just some things that they heard uh, that Paul was teaching to to people. Uh, They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. Uh, What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come. So do what we tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. So Uh, There's some kind of reports about kind of what Paul has said to various people and such in verses 21 through 24. Uh, And so in verse 26, you kind of see uh, Paul's response to that then of what they're kind of asking him to do then um, in order to kind of make sure that people don't get mad at him. Verse 26, then the next day Paul took the men and purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. Um, and so they kind of hear these reports. They say, hey, go do this thing uh, so that you know people can be happy with you. And then he goes and does that in verse 26. Then also in verse 25, we kind of skipped over that. Uh, it says, as for the Gentile believers, this is still when they're kind of talking to Paul. It says, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain to, from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. Um, that is uh, kind of a report of kind of something we saw, I believe, in Acts chapter Uh, 15. So you can go back and watch that video that kind of talks about that. Uh, But that's found in Acts chapter 15, kind of what they're talking about in verse 25. So uh, how can we apply these verses? Well, let's remember to thank God when he does something good. And also let's have Paul's heart. Uh, He has such a heart for, for missions, has such a heart for the lost. And let's have Paul's heart. And also when God does something good in our lives, or we hear about something good from God, Uh, that he's done in somebody else's life. Let's remember to praise God and remember to thank God as well. So let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you and praise you for what you've done in my life. And I just pray that you would help us to be able to remember when something uh, from you happens in our lives, Lord God, I just pray that you would help us to be able to remember to thank and praise you in those moments. And I also pray that we would be able to have the heart of Paul for the lost, Lord God, to be able to have such a um, such a good a motive and such a right heart that Paul has. I pray that we would have that as well. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.